If you walk into Museum of Modern Art in New York, you will shockingly find a 30 years old computer being listed as art. ThinkPad 701Z. When you open the laptop, the keyboard flare out like a butterfly's wing. And at the moment when it publish, is literally the iPhone moment. They receive over 27 major industry design reward. And soon enough, this laptop become a symbol just like Rolex or Hermes. And the person who initiated this project of art and even saw the potential of personal computer is Tim Cook. But if you review the past five generation of iPhone, can you really tell the difference? Tim Cook can tell you we have a better chips, it's more smooth when you're using the phone, or tell you there's a better camera. However, this hardware upgrade is hardly make people make association with Nokia in the end of the year. It's effective, it's safe, and it's profitable. So what makes Tim Cook give up the design and the innovation he has when he in the early year? And what makes Stephen Jobs believe Tim Cook is the only one can become the successor of the company? And why so many business commentary believe that? If there's no Tim Cook, there will be no as successful Steve Jobs and Apple as we can see. If we want to understand those questions, we really have to one time back to 1985. Steven Jobs always choosing his CEO very careful because he get punished by his mistake very harshly. Do you want to sell sugar water for your life or you want to come with me to change the world? That's the sentence that changed John Skelly, the CEO of Pepsi at the moment's mind, to come with Stephen Jobs to work for Apple in 1983. The first couple of years run very smooth. The new improved business model and the brilliant operating system make the company sell way more than before. However, this situation didn't maintain long. Two years later, John Skelly collaborated with the board of Apple, fired Steve Jobs. You may ask why? Because Steve Jobs gave too much disagreement and anger to the people who he working for. However, compared to John Skelly, he earned money for the shareholder immediately. What can I say? I hired the wrong guy. That was Skelly? Yeah. And uh, he destroyed everything I'd spent 10 years working for. Um, starting with me, but that wasn't the saddest part. Uh, I would have gladly left Apple if Apple would have turned out like I'd wanted it to. The board soon enough learned their lessons. Without Stephen Jobs, not even talk about develop the company even further, even survive would be a problem for Apple. 1995, the competitor Microsoft literally copied the Macintosh operating system and is selling within a year 40 million copies. But Apple are showing a different phenomenon. 1996 first quarter, Apple is losing about 69 million net loss. On the third quarter, they already losing 740 million dollars. That's the biggest loss in the history in Silicon Valley. And those numbers even earned John Skelly the name worst CEO of all time. Millions of dollars have been lost in the home market over the last several years. And now Apple president John Scully says that home market no longer exists. I believe there is no such thing as a home computer market. Uh, all the sales that we have. To solve the situation, the board is firing John Scully and they find someone new, Gilbert Amelio. He was a former CEO in National Semiconductors. His strategy is simple. He creates over 40 different product lines to grab market share and customer in different competitive small segments. The imagination are good, however the result turned out to be completely opposite as he imagined. Because how similar the product are within these 40 product lines, it not only didn't create any competitive advantage in small segment, it also creates a loss of redundant inventories sitting around over a billion dollars that no one want those products. The first quarter, Amelio become a CEO, Apple have about 7% of the market share. Three quarters later, about nine months, Apple only has about 2.8% the most 
dire situations for the board is there is about one billion dollar order that was ordered by the customer. However, because the complex product line, they could not deliver those product to the customer. But on the opposite, there is about billion dollar worth of computer that no one wants is sitting in the inventories. And at this moment, Apple is in the verge of bankruptcy. And then let's move our point of view to Steve Jobs. What have he done when he got fired? Based on graphic technology, he created the company Next. He even acquired the company Pixar and using the Next graphic technology to create animations. Within this period of time, Steve Jobs earning even more money than what he had done the past 10 years in Apple. In the end, the board have to admit, without Steve Jobs, Apple is nothing. So they have to invite Stephen Jobs back to the company to be the CEO. He is back. But the path forward is very difficult for Stephen Jobs because the first issue he has solved is the supply chain and the management inventory issues. And at that time, is half year away from iMac publish, and it's couple year of publish of iPod. At that moment, Steve Jobs said, "There's only one person can save us from this management supply chain issue, Tim Cook." After the famous butterfly keyboard design in IBM, Tim Cook get headhunt to the largest PC maker, Compaq Computer, and become the main person to organize the. Uh, management and supply chain, but the improved business model and the supply chain he designed for compact computer destroy all other competitors. Even IBM, the old dominance manipulator, have to learn from compact computer to have a equal competitions. Imagine you are this most important person in the largest company. Now someone from a almost borderline bankrupt company. CEO come up to you to invite you to their company. Would you say yes? I talked to people I trusted that knew me, and they said, "This is not what you should do." It wasn't so easy, and and people said, "You know, you're just crazy. You're working for the top PC company in the world. How could you even think of doing this? You've lost your mind." And yet. That voice said, "Go west, young man. Go west." <laughs> But here, it actually show how charismatic is Stephen Jobs. Only the first time Steve meeting Tim Cook, it already is enough to convince Tim Cook to dedicate his life working under the picture Steve Jobs painted for him. After Tim Cook joined Apple. Stephen Jobs is the first time actually feeling to work with someone as capable as him, and the first joint effort they made is to change the complicated product line and the inventory issues. On the product line, they cut original 40 uh, products that designed by Emilio down to only four that separates from function level, family, or professional, and on the hardware level, they decide separate from laptop and the tabletop. However, on the inventory issue, there's nothing that Steve Jobs can help. Only person can solve this issue is Tim Cook. But when he actually start putting some action in, it scared Steve Jobs to cold sweat. First, he start with the source of inventory from 19 warehouses they has. He cut down 10 of them immediately. However, there is a worth of hundreds of millions of Apple computer is overflowing. Due to this short of warehouse spaces, so what he do? He tell his worker, find a place and bury all of them. And this bold suggestion even shocked Stephen Jobs. But he later on realized this is the brilliant idea because it's not only saving the logistic management cost, it also save a lot of opportunity cost for Apple at the moment. The first couple of days, Tim Cook stepped in the office. He reduced the limitation for inventory from two months down to one month. But a couple months later, he realized one month is too long, so he cut it short to six days. If it's longer six days, what we do? We bury them. 
Even then, those are worth a million dollars, blood and sweat of Apple. We don't care. The next year, he even thinks six is too long. So what he do, he set the limit down to 15 hours. If no one want them, we bury them right next to the factory. He also managed to change the form of his supplier. In the beginning, they have over 101 supplier for Apple. Within one year of him stepping in the office, he reduced that number down to 24 and asked all of those manufacturers to move next to Apple manufacturer or the inventory house. To avoid the tragic of $1 billion order that they're missing and the $1 billion inventory that no one wants, he even invests in ERP operating system, enterprise resources planning. For the people who don't have the idea, ERP system is literally the big data analytics. In another term, he also indirectly started the big data and the data age. He even invited Jeff William to become the chief predictor of market. So they can exactly know when does who want what. Now we look back, you know, have a little bit survey and doing a little bit market research. It's a common sense almost. Every company, regardless you're small or big, you, you will do that. But at the moment, market research is not as predominant as right now. And he is the first one pay so much attention and money into this sector. To help Steven Jobs have a successful launch for legendary iMac, he even, ahead of nine, eight months, booked a hundred million dollar worth of air cargo for the delivery. So when this superstar product drop, all other competitors have a zero way of shipping their own product to the customer, but iMac. In 1998, iMac personal computer dropped and they start the age of Steve Jobs. If Stephen Jobs is a genius of design and innovations, Tim Cook's goal is build a good enough foundation for this company. In 2007, when Nokia published their first smartphone, people were shocked the design within this legendary phone. When you open them, the compact machinery is not anything less than a personal computer. However, in the same year, the first iPhone also published. When you open the first generation iPhone, the mechanic design is even more compact. In N95, the most space taken is a three memory card. However, when you open first generation iPhone, all the memory card is disappear. All the extra room is leaving for wild imagination of Steven Jobs. After the story, we can answer the second and the third question we ask. Why Stephen Jobs picked Tim Cook as a successor, and why lots of people believe if there's no Tim Cook, there will be no Stephen Jobs and Apple that we see nowadays. But what makes Tim Cook so realistic and give up the design that he used to be good at? The answer is actually embedded in that computer that he initiated. ThinkPad 701. After one year, tremendous success and a countless design reward, soon enough, IBM is calling stop for selling and making more of this brilliant computer. The intention of Butterfly Keyboard is to give a 10-inch computer a bigger keyboard to type on. However, one year later, the product that killed this phenomenal art design, the permanent reserve in a museum, is simply a 12-inch screen. Bigger laptop, bigger keyboard, problem solved. Maybe from that moment, Tim Cook already realized bigger than bigger is the goal of technology. Maybe the practical is what it needed. Maybe the design and the innovation is not what's truly important for the customer. If Stephen Jobs show how sexy can technology be, Tim Cook is showing us how rational can a technology provide. If you reveal Tim Cook's 25 year experience and working at Apple, he's dedicated for one thing, that is keep Apple running.
And that will be all for today's video. I really hope you learned something and get inspired. And my name is Paul. I see you next time.